Implementing RCM in Busy This presentation will give you an overview on implementing RCM in Busy Reverse Charge Mechanism RCM is a totally new concept in India which is introduced with the implementation of GST. Under RCM basically you need to pay or deposit tax to the government as RCM on the unregistered purchases made by you. So if you have purchased goods or made expenses from an unregistered dealer basically a person who is not registered under GST or who does not have a GSTI number then in that case the actual tax amount for the goods is to be deposited to the government. Later on however you can claim ITC for that. Now you must be thinking if I am getting the ITC claim then why should I deposit the RCM. This is basically done to cover more and more people under GSTN net and to reduce unregistered purchases. So there are certain cases also where you cannot claim ITC such as on expense made on food and beverages, cab rentals, club and health memberships. Apart from that in most of the expenses you will get ITC claim. Other than unregistered purchases, there are certain cases like transporters and lawyers. In such a case, if you have taken services from transporters and lawyers which are registered, then also you need to pay RCM to the government. That in case of transportation charges and legal services, if you have taken them from registered dealer also, then you need to pay RCM to the government. Also in case of import of services, if you have taken some services from a company outside Indian territory, then also you need to pay RCM. So in this presentation, we will discuss all such issues related to RCM, registered purchases, unregistered purchases, import of services, taking services from a registered dealer or from an unregistered dealer and how we will implement all these entries in BUSY. So in this presentation, we will try to cover as much as possible cases of RCM and other registered expenses. In most of the cases, you need to pay RCM only when the consolidated expense for the day is, is more than 5000 rupees. Apart from this, there are certain cases also in which you need to pay RCM necessarily or there is no minimum daily limit in them. But in most of the cases, in general cases, this daily limit of 5000 rupees applies. Now to implement RCM in BZ, first of all, we'll start with the account creation and specify the ITC eligibility, reverse charge, tax category and other related things. So first of all, we'll go to administration's master account add option. Here we'll create our expense account. First of all, we'll create an account for office station. Now office stationery can be chargeable at different rates. Like you can have registers and letter pads chargeable at 18% and ball pens and pencils, erasers like items at 12%. So you need to create separate expense account for different tax rates. Here first we have created, first we are creating an account for office stationery at 12%. Take its group as expenses indirect, tax category GST 12%, ITC eligibility, input goods, select input goods option if you are getting ITC eligibility against the input goods, input services if the expense account is for the services you are providing, capital goods if the account is for capital goods, capital ex goods expenses and none, none in case if you are not getting any ITC eligibility. There are certain accounts like food and beverages, cab rentals on which you will not get ITC claim. On such accounts you need to select the none option but for office stationery at 12% we will select the option as input goods. Next is reverse charge very important as we are discussing the presentation about reverse charge only so in the reverse charge there are four options first is based on daily limit that is whatever expense you'll meet under this account head will build that expense be liable for rcm will depend totally on the minimum daily limit there is a limit of 5000 rupees and if we are total consolidated expenses for a day exceeds 5000 rupees then only you need to pay rcm to the government so this account falls under such category wherein total of all the expenses made on a particular day will be calculated and if they exceed rupees 5000 rupees then only these expenses will be liable for rcm next option is compulsory registered dealer this option is for those dealers who are registered like if you are taking services from any registered dealer and still you need to pay rcm these cases are for transporters and lawyers 
In case of transporters and lawyers, if you have taken services from registered transporters or from registered law firm, then also you need to pay RCM to the government. So in such cases, you will select the option as compulsory registered dealer. Next is service import. If you have imported some services, imported services in the case like you have taken services from a company outside Indian territory, like we have taken server hosting space from a company from US or UK. In that case, you have to select the service import option. Next is not applicable. Although there are very few or maybe no expense account for which RCM is not applicable in current date, but if you have any such expense, then you can select the not applicable option. Next, we'll create the office stationery at 18% account. We'll take its tax category as GST 18%. ITC eligibility input goods and again this expense will also depend on based on daily limit option. So we'll take the reverse charges based on daily limit. Next we'll create account for groceries that is tea, coffee, sugar expenses. Here you can see in the ITC eligibility section we have selected the option as none because as I have said earlier in the presentation also on food and beverages or any food item if you have made any expense on any food item then you will get no ITC claim for that. So in such accounts we will select the ITC eligibility as none and reverse charge based on daily limit. Next we will create an account for food and beverages. Here also will take ITC eligibility as none because again it's a case of food and beverage item like you have ordered food for your office staff or you made expenses on food and beverages then you will not get any ITC claim on it. Next we are creating an account for office miscellaneous expenses like soaps, detergent, phenyls. Here we will specify the tax category, ITC eligibility as input goods and reverse charges based on daily limit. Next is our cab rental expense. For cab rental expense also you will not get any ITC claim. So under this account we will take ITC eligibility as none and reverse charge as based on daily limit. Next we will create an account for server hosting space USA that is you have taken server hosting space from a company in USA. In this case we will take the tax category as services 18% as this is the case of services we are taking services from a company. ITC eligibility as input services. You will get 100% ITC claim on such expenses so you will take the IT eligibility as input services and reverse charges service import that is it is the case of importing services from a company outside Indian territory. Click save button to save this account. Next we will create an account for transportation charges registered. Now here one important point I like to tell you is that in case of transportation services and legal services you need to deposit RCM to the government even if you have taken the services from a registered dealer. So here is the case of taking transportation services from a registered dealer. In this case ITC eligibility is input services you will get the ITC claim for such services and reverse charges compulsory registered dealer. It is compulsory to deposit RCM when you have made expenses under these accounts. There is no minimum daily limit for these accounts that is even if you have paid transportation services charges less than 5000 rupees then also that service is liable for RCM. Next we will create an account for transportation charges unregistered that is you have taken transportation services from an unregistered dealer. Again this is the case of unregistered purchase so you will take the ITC eligibility as input goods and reverse charges based on daily limit. Difference between taking transportation and legal services from a registered dealer or unregistered dealer is that in case of registered dealer it is compulsory to pay the RCM but in case of unregistered dealer RCM liability will depend on minimum daily limit of 5000 rupees. Now we have done with the creation of account master. Our next step will be to use these accounts and transactions and enter payment, journal or purchase voucher for the expenses. So first of all we will enter a payment voucher. We will go to transaction payment add option. We are entering this voucher for 1st July. In the GST nature section you can see various options. First is not applicable that is this bill is not applicable for GST. Next is unregistered RCM purchase that is you have made expenses from an unregistered dealer or this expense is liable for RCM then you will select the unregistered RCM expense option. Next is registered expense like you have like you have 
made expenses from a dealer who is registered and who is willing to print your tin number on the bill like you have taken services from bharti airtel company and the company is printing your tin number on the bill then this is a case of registered expense next is refund against advance receipt and gst payment to government we'll not discuss these options in this presentation so first of all here we are debiting the office stationery at 12% account with 1500 rupees and office stationery at 18% account with 2000 rupees and crediting the cash account with 3500 rupees so this will shows that we have made expenses of 3500 rupees from an unregistered dealer and this payment is liable to rcm only if the total consolidated expenses of 1st july exceed rupees 5000 rupees Next we are entering a payment voucher on 1st July for unregistered RCM expenses for groceries tea coffee sugar of rupees 2000 rupees this transaction is liable for RCM if the total expense for 1st July exceed rupees 5000 rupees but you will not get any ITC claim on groceries item Next we are entering a voucher for unregistered expense RCM expense for food and beverages expense of rupees 800 that is we are assuming here that we have ordered food from some roadside vendor which does not have a GSTN number and next we are entering a payment voucher for 2nd July here we have taken the GST nature is not applicable and we are debiting the food and beverages account so you can see in the earlier transaction we have taken the gst nature as unregistered rcm expense but in but in this transaction we have taken the gst nature as not applicable with the same account food and beverages here we are assuming that we have ordered food from big restaurant which, which is a registered dealer and the bill you have got already included the gst amount so in case of purchases from a registered dealer you are not liable to pay rcm to the government as the tax is already charged by the service or goods provider next we are entering a transaction on 2nd july for cab rental expense of rupees 600 from an unregistered dealer that is you have taken some taxi services or you have paid auto fare of rupees 600 rupees then this is a case of unregistered rcm expense and again on cab rental expense you will not get any itc claim Next we are entering a transaction on 2nd July for unregistered RCM expense made for office miscellaneous expenses like phenyl soap detergent that is you have purchased this goods from an unregistered dealer who does not have a GSTN number and you are liable to pay RCM for this transaction next we are entering one more payment voucher for 5th July here we have taken the GST nature is not applicable and we are debiting the office miscellaneous expense account with 2000 rupees here we are assuming that that is you have purchased goods from some big departmental store like big bazaar or any other such store which is a registered dealer and the and the departmental store store owner does not print your tin number on the bill that is it is totally a case of normal purchase like you have purchased some goods from big bazaar and you have got a bill on which your tin number is not mentioned next we are entering a payment voucher on 10th july here we have taken the gst nature is registered expense you can see we are debiting the office miscellaneous expense account cgst input and sgst input account here we are assuming that we have purchased this goods from a departmental store who is a registered dealer who is ready to print our tin number on the bill on saving this voucher a registered expense window appears in which you need to select the party from which you have purchased the goods and specify the purchase bill details like purchase bill number date taxable amount and ITC eligibility here we'll take the ITC eligibility as input goods that is we are eligible to get ITC on this bill so you can see that this adjustment would be reflected in GSTR2 so this is the case of registered expense wherein you have purchased goods from a person who is a registered dealer but who is ready to print your, your tin number on the bill next we are entering one more payment voucher on 10th july this is the case of unregistered rcm expense here we are debiting transportation charges unregistered expense account with 1200 rupees that is we have taken transportation services from an unregistered dealer for 1200 rupees so this transaction will come under unregistered rcm expense next we are entering one more payment voucher for 12th july here we are taking gst and nature as unregistered rcm expense and we are debiting transportation charges registered expense account with 3000 rupees 
Now, as I have told earlier also that in case of transportation services and legal services, it is necessary to pay RCM to the government. Although you have taken transportation services from a registered dealer, but GST nature will remain as unregistered or RCM expense. Next, we are entering one more payment voucher on 15th July. Here we have taken GST nature as unregistered RCM expense and we have debited server hosting space USA account. That is, we have taken server hosting space from a company in US and this is the case of service import and will fall under unregistered RCM expense nature. Till now, we have entered the payment vouchers. In case you need to enter purchase vouchers for the expenses you have made, then in the purchase voucher also we have made the option to specify the input tax eligibility and the reverse charge type. Here we will enter one supply inward voucher, purchase voucher, specify the date we are entering this voucher on 20th July. We will take the purchase type as LGST unregistered RCM expense. On modifying this purchase type, you can see its taxation type as unregistered RCM expense. Next party we have taken as cash, that is, it is a cash bill. ITC eligibility as input goods, that will get the ITC claim under this and reverse charge based on daily limit. Here we have taken the item as mobile covers and we are purchasing 100 pieces of mobile covers at Rs 70 per piece. Here we are assuming that we are purchasing mobile covers from an unregistered dealer and we will sell it to our customer and charge GST on it. So you can enter purchase voucher also for the expenses made. Next we will go to transaction GST miscellaneous utilities option to check post consolidated RCM payable vouchers. Here on clicking the check post consolidated RCM payable option, first you need to specify the date range for which you want to view the RCM summary. On the screen Busy has shown you that on these particular dates there is a RCM liability. You need to pay RCM only for these dates. Other than these dates maybe there is no RCM liability. On, on pressing enter key on particular rows you can view the details of the expenses you have made that is Busy is showing that on 1st July you have entered following vouchers. And total consolidated bill for all this voucher is exceeding 5000 rupees. Here, by pressing F4 key, you can post a journal voucher. On pressing the F4 key, you can see on the screen, Z is showing you various default accounts created by Busy. You can use these accounts, and if you want, you can modify these accounts. Pressing the save button, you can see a journal voucher has been posted where is CGST input available, SGST input available. In case of groceries and food and beverages, as you will not be getting ITC claims, so these accounts are debited. On saving the voucher, reverse charge liability window will appear and the data shown in the reverse charge liability window will be reflected in GSTR2. You can click manage RCM invoice number to generate invoice number for these RCM vouchers. Pressing the save button in the window, you can print the tax invoice for RCM. On the screen, you can see preview of the standard format of tax invoice for RCM. Here on the screen, you can see that voucher posted is showing as yes. Next, we'll press enter key on the next entry and here on the screen you can see this is the entry for transportation charges register. Although this taxable amount is 3000 but in case of transportation services, it is compulsory to pay RCM so there is no minimum daily limit of 5000 rupees. Here also on pressing F4 key, you can post a journal voucher for the same. Next is the case of service import. You can post a journal voucher for this also. Click save button to post a journal voucher. In the journal voucher, on clicking the save button, a reverse charge liability window will appear which is showing the data and this data will be reflected in GSTR2. You can also view the tax invoice for RCM. Next, we will post a journal voucher for the entry on 20th July, that is we have entered a purchase voucher on 20th July. You can see on the screen that on saving the journal voucher, a reverse charge liability window appeared which will reflect the data in the GSTR2. On the screen you can see yes is being showing against the voucher posted option for all the entries for which you have posted a journal voucher. Hope after going through this presentation you would be able to easily implement and enter RCM related entries and other registered expense related entries in Busy. You can also watch our video on managing expenses in Busy for more details. Thanks for watching. For more videos subscribe to our YouTube channel.